Isaiah 42, verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 42, verse 1 to 2. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you, okay? Uh, if I'm not wrong, this is the, uh, not the King James Version, if I'm not, not wrong, okay? Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment on the truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth. And the owl shall wait for his law. Thus says the Lord God, He that created the heavens and stretched them up, He that spread, up, spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the Spirit to them that walketh therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will uphold thy hand, I will keep you and give you for a covenant of, of the people, for a light to the, of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and to them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven image. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song. His praise from the ends of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, all that is therein, the owls and the inhabitants thereof. The, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar do inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock, Selah, which is Selah, sing. Let them shout out from the top of the mountains. Let them sing, give glory unto the Lord and declare His praise in the islands, okay, you know, uh, when we were starting our, uh, our church planting, the team was declare his praise in the island. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you just anoint this message, which is given to me. Anoint it, let your people hear it. In Jesus' name I pray. I'm going to title my message this morning, A New Servant. The New Servant. Uh, the New Servant or A New Servant. You know, um, a missionary shared this story. He shared this story. I prayed to God to bring new hope and new life after my wife's death. I agonized my prayer, devoted myself to Bible study, and sought every way I could to get hope and direction for life. I almost gave up. I decided I was going to be lonely for the rest of my life with no way to understand what was God up to or with the death of my companion, which is my wife. Finally, I went to a grief group because I knew what a person in grief is supposed to do. There I found people with the same emotion, complaints, sorrow and questions that I had. I thank God at least He showed me that I was not crazy. Then God surprised me. He led me to an, my employer who began a program of mission trips. I joined the first trips to Kenya. In Kenya, I found new involvement in God's Word and discovered God is still using me to minister to others and let, me, let them to know Him as Saviour. Or when I was about to give up on myself, and God surprised me again. He led me closer and closer to a member of the grief group until He led us to a new marriage commitment. This one came with a 10-year-old daughter attached. Through a new wife, a new daughter, a new mission field, God brought me back to life. In the real sense, He redeemed my life and made me His new servant. Make me His new servant. Similarly, if you study the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, you look at the situation of the children of Israel. Israel felt near death. In exile, under foreign rulers, surrounded by foreign warships, Israel felt alone, deserted, forsaken, worthless, and hopeless. Psalms 137 verse 1 describes exactly how Israel felt. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. Despair hovered over everything. Then they heard the promise God has given His prophet long ago 
Now a prophetic word has a new ring and a new reality. God was calling Israel to a new mission, a new worship, a new experience, a new salvation. He's calling me for a new, He's calling for a new servant. How about you? How about you? Maybe like the missionary or Israel, you felt death surrounding you. Some of you, there was one time you think you are going to die soon. You felt death surrounding you. You have almost given up hope. Your life is no different to that of an outcast. Your neighbours surround you with other worships, other idols and other beliefs, different from yours. You felt unhelped, unaided, empty, valueless and despondent. Hopelessness hangs over everything. Is this what you felt? It is so interesting that in the midst of preparing this message, this sermon, I actually felt that way. You know, the, the first week when the RSBC team came, then the second week, my pa parents came. Then after that, I just felt something wrong with me. I felt that way. A spirit of livelessness, deadness, hopelessness suddenly overwhelmed me. I mean, I have my devotion. It's not that, I, I, that two weeks I did not. I was maintaining my devotion. But the spirit of livelessness, deadness, Hopelessness suddenly overwhelmed me. I felt this week that way. And to feel in the midst of Christmas mood was really surprising. I was sharing these defeating thoughts with my wife. She told me that I did not take care of my mental thoughts. I think she is right. Then I realized that God can bring me back to life and make me His servant. This morning, I want to share about the calling of a new servant. This servant is far from perfect. Okay, this servant is far from perfect. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect when they are caught or even when they are in the midst of doing the ministry of God. Nobody is perfect. Paul had problem with his eyes. Moses has a speech impediment. How to preach when you have a speech impediment? How to lead the people when you have a, the people of 3 million people when you have a speech impediment? The three Hebrew children are most likely eunuch. Daniel and the three Hebrew children. They are most likely eunuch. Elisha was bald. He has no hair. Elisha has his, pop, has, his, has his period of depression. If you want to read about, you want to study about depression, mental problem, you should read about the prophet Elisha. Hosea's wife, that I just read to you about betrothal. His wife was unfaithful to him. Jephthah was an illegitimate child. Maybe you are a child of an illegitimate marriage. You probably can add your name there, which I describe all this. That is the calling of a new servant that God is calling. Actually, Isaiah 42 is a song or a poetry. It is like introducing a new theme, a new life a new spirit, and it has to do with each and every one of us. In the midst of deadness, Yahweh is introducing a new servant, a new energy, a new righteousness, a new covenant, a new church, and the new things ahead of you. And all has to do with each and every one of us. What can we learn from this portion of Scripture that I've just read? Number one, the new servant, a new servant. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighted. I put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. The title servant is a title of respect, a title of calling. So when God called this, per this servant, he called him to give him a title, he called him because he respected him. It is the calling and the respect. The servant has both a corporate, the word servant has a corporate, and the individual orientation. Okay, the title can be used in a, a corporate sense. Corporate sense, for instance, the patriarch as a group, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob as a group, and Joseph, they are the servant, a group. It can be a collective sense. Nation, Israel as a nation can be the servant, a collective sense. So Etap as a collective body can be called that group. And I think God has called our church for a purpose. 
but also it has to be the ideal it is also it can also be the ideal individual the ideal individual an ideal Israelite an ideal priest it is very ironic because of the imperfection of each and every one of our life of the Israelite life God says you are the ideal person and I want you to be that servant it's very interesting God said you are the ideal you, you are the perfect person that I want. You are the right person that I'm choosing. You, you are the model that I want to pick. You are the model I want to pick for, for people to follow, for people to be encouraged to come after me, for imitation. He will be an individual accomplishing God's will. He will be that light. You will be that light, a metaphor for spiritual deliverance. You will bring forth spiritual deliverance for people. In the Septuagint, it refers to national Israel where I, Isaac, uh, Yahweh said, Jacob is my servant. It's so clear. Jacob is my servant, a group. I will help him. Israel is my chosen. But more importantly, which is more important to each and every one of our life, it refers to an individual. When the name servant was mentioned there, it refers to an individual most of the time in the Bible. David, Caleb, Moses, Joshua, and you. The word servant in Hebrew is ibet, which refers to a slave. A slave. So in all cases, the term servant refers to a person whose characteristics is one of dependence upon God. He has a habitual dependence upon God and he has a habit of servitude towards God. This person totally depended upon God in life, on life, and he labored as one belonging to the property of Yahweh. Do you depend upon God in life? Do you consider yourself a property of Yahweh? Here it is describing the nature of this servant, dependent on God and a servant to Yahweh. So, you know, I, you have to pray like we pr I pray. God, Make me that servant. Take over my life. I want to be used by you. Number two, a new spirit. Notice the things that Yahweh have done and will do for His special servant. Three truths are mentioned here. In verse 1, we say, Behold my servant whom my, I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delighted, I put my spirit upon him. So three truths. Whom I uphold, in whom my spirit delights, I put my spirit upon him. We need to understand that God is calling the person His chosen one. God takes delight. It's very hard to believe. But God said to you, I take delight. I take delight in you and uphold you and I support you. You are Yahweh's ideal servant. Your mission is not to deliver yourself from captivity and exile. Many a times we think that when God saves us, it's to deliver us from captivity, deliver us from exile. Deliver us from being outcast. Deliver us from bondage. But the truth is, God called us a servant so that we can have a new mission for the nations. This is where we got all wrong. Our missions is not to be delivered from bondages and exile. Our missions is for those people outside of these four walls, outside of this, in this country, outside of this church, and also for nations. Foreign missions is definitely a part of the agenda of God. In the past, we always say, proclaim His praise to the nation and we send missionaries throughout the whole of Philippines. But today, God's mission is for the nations. I want to concentrate on the third point, which is the most important. I put my spirit upon Him. I put my spirit upon Him. Again, it is describing the nature of this servant. This refers to the servant being anointed equipped for the task. This servant gained power from the Divine Spirit. This servant gained power from the Divine Spirit. Yahweh will invest in this new servant by enduing him with his own spirit. Actually, my elect, the word my elect means you are handpicked by God. Handpicked by God. That's the meaning of my elect. Whom I hold my elect. I am the one that handpicked you. Please, you are the ideal servant, even though 
you have a lot of flaws, you have a lot of problems in life. This is a very important truth. God said, I will put my spirit upon you. This has reference to the personhood of the spirit. You know, I thank God that we are Pentecostal. I don't care what people say, we speak in tongues. And I believe in the speaking in tongues. This is God's spirit. This is not just another spirit. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for spirit of God is ruach. Ruach. Ruach means a force which accomplishes God's purpose. You need God's spirit, a force which accomplishes God's purpose. All the prophets, all the servants of God, including Jesus, they received God's spirit, the force which accomplishes God's purpose in life. In ministry you cannot go through life you cannot even be a christian if you do not have the reward to go through life in this world a force which accomplishes god's purpose there's also a little hint that this force is personal an old testament monotheism which is one god that god that come upon you that God that come upon you, the Spirit of God that come upon you. In the New Testament, the full personality of the personhood of the Holy Spirit is revealed. What is this Spirit? He can be blasphemed. He can be blasphemed. Don't say anything bad about tongues. He can be blasphemed. He teaches. He bears witness. He convicts. He guides. He can be grieved. He can be quenched. You can resist him, he can be quenched. And he can leave you alone. He can be resisted. Some of you, you're resisting him. He, can, he advocates for the believers. He glorifies the Son. The Greek word, spirit, in Greek is pneuma. It's neuter, neither male or female, when referring to the spirit. But in the New Testament, okay, it uses the masculine demonstrative adjective. The spirit is a male figure. The Spirit is a male figure. God the Father has always been a male figure. Okay, this Spirit is a masculine figure. The, the Spirit is linked to human activity. See, whatever you do in the Spirit will last. Whatever you do without the Spirit will not be fruitful, will not be last, will not last. At the beginning of Acts, the spirit role is emphasized. Pentecost was not the beginning of the work of the spirit. Pentecost was a new chapter for the Holy Spirit. Jesus always had the spirit. His baptism was not the beginning of the work of the spirit. His baptism was a new chapter. I think we all need the spirit of God one more time for a new chapter in our life. A new chapter. God wants to do with us. The Spirit wants to begin a new chapter in your life. The Spirit is God's effective means to accomplish God's purpose for the restoration of the humans made in His image. You know, I, I realize how much, and I hope that you realize how much you need the Holy Spirit how much you need to put the Spirit of God upon you. You must all be filled with the Spirit and do the ministry in the power and flow of the Spirit. If not, it will not be effective. I want the anointing. I want the unction. I want that new Spirit. I want that new Spirit. I remember when I was young, I, I, I wanted my name to be called Elijah. My friend made fun of me when she heard that I want, she cannot stop laughing. When I say I want to call my name Elijah, because Elijah was so different from other prophets, the Spirit of God will come upon him and he will accomplish great tasks. He was bold, authoritative, powerful, and what he declared will come to pass and be accomplished. But Elijah was also as human as any one of us. The Bible said he was a man of light passion as any one of us. Light passion like any one of us. So we can be like Elijah. The Bible says he was a man who, with whom has, who has the fullness of the Spirit of God. Elijah, the thing that interests me concerning Elijah was that the Spirit of God was upon him. 
Notice the things that the servant will do, the new servant will do when they have God's Spirit upon him. One, he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out. He will not raise his voice. He will not make his voice heard in the street. He will not break a bruised reed. He will not extinguish a dimly lit, a dimly burning wick. He will not be disheartened. He will not be crushed. He will establish justice in the earth. There is a calling of a person in whom the Spirit of God dwells. He shall not cry. He shall not lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard. Means he will not draw attention to himself. He will not draw attention to himself. Jesus was not loud. Jesus was not boisterous. He will not draw attention. You know, today, 90% of ministers of this world draw attention to themselves. You know, I, I respect Peter Tanchi. They always wanted him to be a bishop. He said, no, I don't want to be a bishop. Call me pastor now already. And they forced him to be a bishop. He was just uh, ordained as a bishop recently. But there are many ministers. They draw attention to themselves. That's why even for us, we must not seek after another speaker. Do you know that? We thank God for his ministers. We thank God we can sit under the footstool. We thank God we can receive from them the Word of God. But the most important thing, you have to receive the Word of God from your relationship, your time, your devotion with God. Yes. But not this servant. He is more on action than his voice. This doesn't mean that he never speak loudly. Rather, it refers to his gentle, lowly heart and action. He doesn't make his ways by loud, bluster sound, overwhelming talks, but by the Spirit of God upon him. A bruised reed will he not break. The smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto the earth. He talks about the nature of the ministry. You know, a reed, a reed is a fairly fragile plant. Yet if a reed is bruised, this new servant will handle it so gently that he will not break it. And flax used to tinder for tinder to start a fire. Does not flame, but only smokes. He will not quench it by extinguishing it, but he will slowly blow upon the smoke until the fire comes out and he flame it into flame again. That is what this new servant will do. The way this servant accomplishes his task is also surprising. He will not be a street preacher. He will not be a political rebel. He will not incite the population. He will not be a royal messenger sending, reading the king's proclamation. Rather, he will exercise God-given ministry, God-given word, God-given uh, teaching, prophecy in such a way that will not damage anything. Not even a broken reed that appears useless or weak they so used up that it can no longer produce fire. Still, their servant will succeed. The word for faithfulness, until he bring to reality, he will not. He will continue until he bring to reality. The emphasis is that he will be faithful. He will be faithful. The word for faithfulness can be translated as he will bring into reality. He will be faithful until the prophecies of God comes into reality. What is the promise God gave unto you? You will be faithful until God brings it into reality. The promise or the prophecy that has given it unto you. The servant will not suffer the fate of uselessness. The hallmark, the hallmark of this new servant, which should be each and every one of us, the hallmark is always mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Whatever task is given to you, you accomplish it. This is what Pastor Lily and we believe. We give you something to do, you do it well. You do it and you accomplish it. This is what we believe. If you don't accomplish, we always say, is there something wrong with your life? Because the hallmark, the hallmark of a servant of God is that whatever task is given to you, is mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Yet in the midst of the ministry, He will bring judgment on the truth. He will give justice to those who have been wrong. It describes a ministry of compassion, understanding, patience to those who somehow have been wounded and stressed. Those who are wounded and stressed. He's compassionate. He's understanding. 
He's patient with these people. He will not oppress. He will not oppress those people that are beaten down. He will not oppress those people that are weak. Yahweh is saying that He will give these people justice through the servant of God. Now, you say, why do we need the Spirit of God? Why do we need the Spirit of God? I will put my Spirit upon Him. Why do we, we need God to put His Spirit upon us? Because Isaiah 42 2 says, He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, to have set judgment in the earth, and the owl shall wait for His law. He will not grow faint. He has this indomitable Spirit. He will not grow faint. Like Caleb, he, they will not be discouraged because they are supported by the Spirit of God that is upon them. And the Spirit of God is never discouraged. God is never discouraged. The Spirit of God is resting upon Him and He will never grow tired. He will never grow weary he, because He's supported by the Spirit of God. Because He will not fail whatever we set out to do. And we will not be easily discouraged. We have a spirit of courage. A different spirit, like God say about David, he has a different spirit. He has a different spirit. If you study that on David's life, he has a different spirit. He has a different spirit. He has a, what is the different spirit? He has God's spirit upon him. He has God's spirit upon him. This spirit is God's spirit. People will wait for the Lord of God through us. So powerful. People will wait for the Lord of God through us. It means the Gentiles will wait for the gospel to be preached to them. Like the people of Macedonia, they talk to Paul in the dream. Come over, come over, come over, Paul, to hear the gospel. Now, remember the dream of Pastor Lily. She said she dreamt this dream. She purchased three big Bibles. I don't know why the Bible is so big. And she was having problem carrying them. She was bringing the Bible to share the gospel and to give it to three total strangers. Then a stranger out of nowhere came and he wanted the Bible and he wanted to hear the gospel. He wanted, in this dream, he wanted to hear the gospel because he wanted the Bible. He said he has two other friends. And Pastor Lily could give this Bible to his two other friends. So he brought Pastor Lily to them and three of them will hear the gospel and receive the big Bible. The Bible says so clearly, people will wait for the Lord of God through us. People will wait for the Word of God through us. People will wait for what we have to say concerning truth. People will believe what we say concerning the Word of God. They will wait for the Lord of God for, from us. That's why you need to know the Bible. You need to know the Word of God. Some of you, you go through life without knowing the Word of God. And you come up with different advice, stupid advice. Worldly advice that is not from God. I, I mean, this missionary's wife said to Pastor Lily, you know, Pastor Lily knew that her, her father is in hell. Okay? Because her father did not receive the gospel. They said, no, maybe she is a pastor's wife. No, I think maybe he's in heaven. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, you come up, oh, when the person die, the spirit is still there. You can still talk to the spirit when the person dies. No, no, no. He's dead, he's dead. He's dead, he's dead. Where do you get all these ideas? From the world. People will wait for you to give the Lord of God. People will wait for you to give the Lord of God. We have the Spirit of God to counteract the lies. The deception is everywhere in this world. You know the Bible, God told me that there's gross darkness in this world. There's spiritual darkness in this world. There's spiritual darkness among the peoples of this world. We have to counteract the lies and the deception in this world who changes the law and ordinance of God. We counter them with truth and the Word of God. We cannot keep silence and speak until truth and righteousness prevail. One of the hallmarks of Jesus is to establish truth. Establish truth. Establish truth. The person with the Spirit of God will restore the damaged image of God. The, da the image of God has been damaged by this world. The image of God has been damaged by politicians. 
The image of God has been damaged by those false prophets and false teachers. You have to restore the damaged image of God, the right image of God. Mankind has been disfellowship with their Creator and this new servant is able to bring them back to intimate fellowship with God one more time. Isaiah 42, 5 say, Thus says the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that come out of it, He that give a breath unto people and the spirit to them that walk therein, He say He gives Ruach. God said He gives Ruach. He gives you His Spirit. He gave you His Spirit. He gave you His Spirit. You have to ask for it like Elisha. Oh, that a double portion, your ruach will come upon me. Elisha wants the Spirit of God. It meant that this servant gives the abundant life to mankind. Number three, a new covenant for the countries. He talks about the task now. This is the task of this new servant. 42, 6 says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will give thee and give thee a, a covenant of, of the people for a light to the Gentiles. The servant has a gospel message for the Gentiles. This is what I like about Isaiah. You know, all the prophets, if you study all the prophets, all the Old Testament prophets, they always are concerned about the Jews, the Jewish people, the Jew, the Jewish people. But Isaiah, I love Isaiah because he talk about us. He talk about us, the Gentiles. Talk about us. The Gentiles. This servant will be a light. You, the servant, is a Gentile. You'll be a light to the nations and a covenant to the people. He's to open blind eyes, bring out prisoners from prison, and those that sit in darkness out of prison. Then he says this. He talk about the scope of the ministry. 42, 11, 12. I don't know if they have it. Yes. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. Then the villages that Kedah do inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock, that means Selah, sing. Let them shout out from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare His praise to in the islands. Three places are mentioned. Kedah, Selah, and the islands. In the Bible, Kedah is synonymous with Arabia. Kedah is possibly referring to the Arab nations. They are the nomadic Arab Arabian tribes from the descendants of Ishmael. Selah, on the other hand, means the rock. This is referring to Petra, the rock, the capital of Edom. This is located in Jordan today. I believe, I believe, one of the main features of the, old, of, of, of the calling of his new servant is the gospel will be preached to the Muslim nations. I believe it's here. There's going to be a revival among the Muslim nations in the world. And this new servant will be tasked with that. You know, recently, because of the Channel News Asia, some donation came in and one Muslim gave some money for the IP in Barotak Viho and also for the medicines in Kabaran Kalan. Okay? And I have to accept it. I cannot reject that, that, that offering because I will be accused of selective support. So he came to Ilolo City. I asked Pastor Carlos, and last November 28, less than a month ago, Pastor Carlos brought him to Barota Viho. And the evening he came back, we had dinner with him and his family. In the midst of the conversation I had with him, I found out that he's a police inspector, a high ranking job, a police officer in the police force. We ex then we were talking, and we accidentally served him. Vegetables with pork. You do that in Singapore, you are in big, big trouble. You cannot do that in Singapore because you'll be very angry and offend, offended because they are saying that you call me Baboy, they'll be offended with you. You don't give pork to them. You know, I say, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. He was so nice, he said, it's okay, it's still nice, it's okay. And he was looking at the pork. Maybe he's also longing for it. <laughs> in a conversation, he told me that he loves Ilolo City, wants to migrate here and hope to find a business venture here. After he went back to Singapore, he wrote in a messenger and thanking me and Pastor Carlos for the hospitality, I wrote an honest reply to him, telling him that a police, actually I wanted to be a police inspector too, 
I said a police inspector is an honourable job, especially working for the government of Singapore. A very secure job pays very well. He said, you don't just quit, think twice. You come here, you lose your job, and if your business venture fails, how? He thanked me for the advice and hopes that we can continue to keep in touch. But one thing fun, funny is that after this whole thing, he called me pastor, which is very unusual for a person of that rank, a person of that religion to call me pastor. Who knows? An impossible may be possible for him to come to know God. I think Yahweh specifically mentioned about salvation coming to the Muslim world too. The third group is the islands. The word Aus, the word Aus refers to coastland. The word Aus re refers to the Gentile countries. Okay, It encompasses all countries whom the servant declares his praise in the island. I believe God is speaking directly to his servant through a prophetic oracle, giving him the breath of life which is his spirit, making him a beacon of light. This servant will bring light, bright, uh, light into darkness, help for, the, help for the helpless, sight for the blind, freedom for the prisoner. Number four, a new thing Yahweh will do. 42, 13 and 14, I'm finishing. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemy. I have long time holden my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now I will cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I want to say something to you. God has endured the suffering of the outcast. You that are His covenant people. He has endured the suffering of you for too long and with deep emotion. What you go through, He endured for too long and deep emotion. He has kept quiet, held His peace and have been silent. It is saying, you have felt despondent long enough. The spirit of outcast and hopelessness, I understand, I empathize, but he has to come to an end. You will not die and be alone, but I'm going to do a new thing for your life. I want to make you a new servant. Now he said, he's stirring up jealousy. I think God wants to stir up a new spirit, especially in this world of gross darkness. He has kept still. He has reframed himself. What you go through, how, how, how you were bullied by the world, how you were tortured, how were you misunderstood. He has kept in, waited in anguish like a woman in labour. Why is a woman in labour? He groans, he grabs, he pants. Now Yahweh is coming with his aid and coming for his covenant people, his servant. I believe that God wants to do something for us as a corporate body of Christ ETAP, the new servant, but also as an individual. He's preparing a smooth highway for us. He is sure to commit. Now you say, Pastor, you have been talking about new, this servant. Who is this new servant? Okay. A major question has been remained unanswered. Who is this new servant commissioned by Yahweh? At one time, People has a definite historical reference to Cyrus. Number one. Then, or the, rem the remnant of Israel. As I tell you, Isaiah is more for the Gentiles. Some people say it points to Jesus Christ. Definitely, it points to Jesus Christ because Jesus of Nazareth, who is the one who has taken such a commission seriously and brought it into reality. But honestly, written within this scripture, this written scripture is a promise of God's future action through a people, through a corporate body, and also through an individual who would accept this commission of God. You know, I remember God told me, Isaiah, I'll make you a commander. I'll make you a commander. It's not, it's not what the Word of God says. It's what the Word of God says to you. To you. Many of you, God gave you a word, but you let it pass by. God gave you a promise, but you let it pass by. What is the Word of God for you? 
God said, I want to put my spirit upon you. Just now that song, God is so good, the stanza. Highly favoured. Ideal. I did not ask Jen to sing this song. I think God is speaking. Let us as a corporate body of Jesus Christ wait upon God. Come to God. You know, this year, 2019, I can say it's one of my best years for my life. One of my best years. Because frankly, I can say that I, I've grown, I've grown in my walk with God. I, I receive things from God that personal, I was telling you that I was quite discouraged, right? Then God said, uh, Pastor Lee, you, got, you, you did not take care of your, your mental, you did not take care of your mental health. I agree with her. Okay? But then God told me that, you wait, I will do a new, I'll make you a new thing, I'll make you a new life. You know, you know, every one of us, we, we come to church and say, God, you please deliver me from captivity. Please deliver me from uh, poverty. Please give me a new house. Please bless me. Please give me a uh, uh, blessing for my family. Please bless my children. You know, the whole life, the whole life. Please pray for this. Please, I'm not saying it's wrong. But I want you to think that God is saying, I I'm sending you. I'm sending you. Um, and we always say, God, oh, hey, I got a new house. It's a blessing of God. Oh, I got a new car. It's a blessing of God. Oh, I got a new work. It's a blessing. Everything is me. Blessing, blessing, blessing. What are you doing? For that call. For that call. You know, Christmas is Santa Claus. God is Santa Claus. You know, uh, candy. You know, like God running here. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, I, I heal you. Okay, uh, I, I, I give you some money. God is not like that. <laughs> there is a call. There's something to do. There's a commission. God is looking for that new servant to put His Spirit upon you. You know, you go to heaven. I believe, I hope that all of us will go to heaven. But I think all of us will cry, have a really good cry. God has so much power within us to accomplish so much things. But we didn't do it because we did not have a close walk with God. Our mind is always on the natural. We see things, we get scared. We see a problem, we get scared. I was telling you that when my mom fell sick, my whole family was in deep hoo -ha. They, Miao Lang was saying that, Tony, mom was calling your name. Mom was calling your name. I woke up at 4 a.m. to pray. Mom was calling your name. So I called my mom, called my sister. Do you know what God told me? She'll be okay. She'll be okay. God can talk to you. Then Miao, uh, Jen recently got some irregular heartbeat. But Lily and me, we are not troubled. Because God tells us, she'll be okay. And she's okay. And she said, my mom is okay. I'm saying that God will take care of the things of your life. But what are the things for God? What about the people? The, the Gentiles are waiting for the word of God, for the Lord of God. The Gentiles are waiting for the Lord of God through you, through you, through you. Shall we close our eyes and pray?